So to find where the derivative is equal to zero, I actually chose this path. I added RT to both sides so that I could find the intersection of the two rates, the in and the out rate. I plug them into my calculator here, and then I calculated an intersection and I recorded to three decimal places. So the interior critical point was t equals 5.117 or 5.118. Again, you can just lop off at three decimal points and the AP board gives you credit or you can round either way. That's this point here and so this is a place that you must check. The other places you must check are your endpoints when t equals 0 and when t equals 6. So for my demonstration or my uh, justification, I will show the quantities at these three places. And so when t equals 0, the integral from 0 to 0 will be 0, so we're just going to have 2,500 cubic yards. When you plug in 5.117 or 5.118, you're plugging into this on your calculator. So here's my setup for this. I already had y2 and y1 in my calculator, so it was quick to do this integral from 0 to 5.117. And so here we have 2492.369 yards cubed. When you do this same integral going from 0 to 6 instead of 0 to 5, you get 2493. 0.277 cubic yards. And so I would probably say C table the least amount of sand is at T equals 5.117 hours and is 2492.369 cubic yards. You said that you were looking for where the derivative is equal to zero. You found where that was because the derivatives were given to you, so you didn't have to take the derivative. You just had to graph what was given and find the intersection. And then you use that to check your endpoints and the interior critical point and report the least value, which in this case was the interior critical point. That will always work for absolute max min problems. There's lots more that you can try to practice. I'd encourage you to do so before the final and the AP test.